So I'm going to share with you my essentials for going out and being out in New York City, traveling around, going around in, in the day to day. I guess another theme of this video is that New Yorkers do not like to waste time and if you are in their way, they're going to get mad. You don't know how the weather will change and since you're out all day, you want to prepare for all types of weather. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be talking about the essentials that you guys will need if you are living or traveling here in New York City. As you know, I moved here from California about two years ago and New York City is like no other city out there, so there's a lot of things that you have to get used to. For me, coming from the suburbs of California, there's a lot of things that I wish I knew before moving here, or just little tips and tidbits that I wish that someone told me so that when I came here, I was more prepared. So I'm going to share with you my essentials for going out and being out in New York City, traveling around, going around in, in the day to day. I know I did a video on tips for living and moving in New York City, but this one will be more about essentials that you guys can bring with you and have with you while you're traveling or just being out and about in the city. So my first tip is to get good, comfortable walking shoes. New York is a walking city. You're gonna be taking public transportation and then walking to and from. And if you're visiting here, you're gonna be walking all over the place. And nowadays it's funny because before, before I moved here, I thought walking like two minutes was way too long. But here walking a mile or half a mile is actually pretty normal. So I would say get yourself some comfortable shoes. For me, I like to wear my Birkenstocks. And the reason why I like these for the summertime or when it's warmer is because they sort of have this like protective shield here from your feet and another tip I would have when picking shoes is that it's going to be really dirty when you're walking around. You don't know what you're stepping in, what's going to be flying up into your feet. So if you don't want to wear closed toed shoes, I would suggest something like Birkenstocks where they're comfortable and good for walking and they let your feet breathe when it's hot outside but it also protects your feet somewhat from the dirty ground. Other people generally wear tennis shoes or some sort of sneakers because it's comfortable and you're able to protect your feet. During the winter, of course, you're going to be wearing boots, snow boots, rain boots. It also rains during the summertime, so keep that in mind. And when I asked people what they wore in the summertime when it rains, they either wear rain boots or the shorter ones, or they just wear open toe shoes and when, the when it gets wet, they just wait till it dries. And I've done that with the Birkenstocks and it's fine. Next is to get a good purse or backpack. For me, you guys have probably seen my Matt and Nat backpack, which I invested in because, well, I carry a camera around, but also it just is better for your shoulders instead of having a purse that's on one shoulder. So either a crossbody purse or a backpack is really key because if you think about it, you don't have a car anymore. You're on the subway and you're gonna be out all day. You're probably gonna be carrying around a lot of different things in your backpack or your purse. So you want something that's comfortable and not too heavy and easy to carry around. You're not gonna be able to put a bunch of stuff in your car or in your trunk to save for later in the day. So make sure you get a purse that can carry a lot of things, is comfortable, and as a plus, if it's waterproof, that's great because like I said, in the summertime, it'll rain randomly. It'll not say it's raining on the forecast and then it'll randomly start raining. So you wanna get something that won't get ruined in the rain. Speaking of rain, another important aspect is to bring a small umbrella. They have ones that are super compact that you can keep in a backpack or a purse because you just never know when it'll rain. So I would say my tip is if it ever said it was going to rain in the forecast, five days ago or three days ago, I bring an umbrella because you just never know. And you look at the, the percent chance of rain on your weather app and you will know if it'll rain or not. And if it even says anything higher than 10%, I would bring an umbrella. Because you don't want to get caught in the rain when you're walking around in New York. All right, a few other essential items that I would keep in my backpack is first Purell. So I know not everyone is a germaphobe, but you just never know what you're going to be touching and especially if you don't like touching the poles on the subway it'll be helpful to use this because you don't know the next time you'll be able to wash your hands or go to a bathroom and speaking of that i have this cool thing called gripper which is from the st startup campaign i think i was targeted as an ad but it basically acts as a little protective shield for you when you're holding on to poles or opening trash cans, doorknobs, whatever. And you're supposed to be able to fold it, but I don't really do that. So I just, before I go on the subway, I prepare it and then I just wrap it around and hold it like this. And supposedly this is antibacterial, so 
along the same lines as staying clean and not knowing what you're going to be touching, I would bring wipes and tissues because, again, you never know. A lot of restaurants, they don't have napkins or they don't have seating. And so you might need some pocket tissues for when you're eating a food or if you touch something gross or if you want to sit down somewhere but it's dirty. Same with these wet wipes. You really just never know when you might need to clean your hands, clean something, clean a surface, or just be generally clean because New York is not a clean city and you'll learn that when you come here or move here. Another great thing to keep in your backpack is an external charger. I have this one from Anchor Anchor uh, that you can get on Amazon, but again, you're out all day. You don't know how many times you're going to be using the your data, looking for where you're going or for Yelp reviews or whatever. So make sure you bring an external charger because there's only a few places that have actual chargers that you can go in and use. You don't want to have to be looking for an Apple store or something. So definitely bringing a little portable extra charger is key. So my next few items are related to the subway system. As I've already alluded to, almost everyone rides the subway. The traffic here is bad, the subway is really convenient and pretty reliable for the most part. You can get anywhere within the city or the outer boroughs, for the, and especially if you're living in the city, it's the way to go. And most people don't even own cars because it's too expensive to own a parking space. So your metro card is, ob is obviously the most important thing to have with you at all times. Um, I did a whole video about how to ride the subway or the bus and how to budget for transportation because you want to know if you want to get the unlimited. Even if you're visiting, you should calculate if you think you should get the unlimited or if you should pay per ride. I know I've talked about this many times before, but the Easy Pay Express is really the best thing, in my opinion, for subways because your Metro card auto fills, it just takes it from your credit card, so you don't have to stand in line refilling this type of Metro card. So, Another tip is to always have a backup Metro card. That's why I have two, because you never know, something might happen. Even if you have two of these, maybe you accidentally didn't, you accidentally forgot to refill it, or you don't have any more money, or for some reason it doesn't work. You don't wanna have to go all the way back, because time is money, and refill or get a new card, and each card is a dollar. So always have a spare card with, your, with you in your wallet in case you need it, or if your friend needs it, or if you lose your Metro card, or something happens. Another great thing to have is a Metro card holder. So I guess another theme of this video is that New Yorkers do not like to waste time and if you are in their way, they're gonna get mad. You don't wanna stand in their way. You don't wanna be the annoying person trying to swipe your card, look for your card in your backpack, fumbling while you're standing in front of the turnstile and then people get annoyed at you. So what I do is I keep it in a special pocket where I know where it is and probably when I'm going down the steps into the subway, I'm already getting my bag ready and I'm already getting my card ready because once I get to the turnstile, I just want to be able to swipe and go right through. Some people on the back of their cell phone have this little pocket that you can like stick onto the back and there they just stick their Metro card in there. I think it's a great way because you are generally on your phone, your phone is nearby and you can easily just take it out and use it but I would be careful because you don't want to lose it as well or you don't want it to fall out or something when you're using your phone. So just put your Metro card in an area where you can easily access it. Some apps that are really great are the MTA app and the Subway Time app. So the MTA app is good because it'll tell you any of the delays, any of the service changes. Sometimes on weekends, the subways don't go the normal route and if you don't know that, you're gonna to try to get onto a subway and things are not gonna go well for you and you're gonna get lost or you're gonna be late. Google Maps is pretty good about knowing when subways are delayed or when they are service changes, but just in case, you might wanna get the MTA app so you can check right away. It also has the map so you know where you're going and which lines go where because, for example, if you're on a Q train but then suddenly it starts going on the R line, you need to know, okay, well, I can no longer get off the stop that I was planning on, so how can I reroute myself while you're on the subway? The Subway Time app is also great because you can see what time the subway is coming. And sometimes most subway stations do have the little tracker that tells you what time the next subway is coming, but sometimes they're not accurate, or sometimes you're on one subway, but you need to transfer to another subway, and you wanna know if you're gonna be able to make that transfer, if you should rush or not. So having the Subway Time app is a real game changer to know what time the subways are coming and to efficiently plan out your transportation. 
Some other items that I think would be great to have in your backpack would be a water bottle. So of course if you're out all day you don't want to carry around a giant water bottle or a metal water bottle or a heavy water bottle. So really I would suggest getting a foldable one. I used to have one, I don't have it anymore because it broke, but it's basically made of really flexible material so you refill it but then as you're drinking it throughout the day it'll become more and more compact so you don't have to carry around a giant bottle. But sometimes places don't offer free water, sometimes places don't have water, or you're just thirsty from walking around, so I would suggest getting a water bottle. Of course, a few other items are an extra jacket. Just, as, just like you don't know if it's going to rain, you don't know if it's going to get cold all of a sudden. You don't know if a restaurant will be blasting its AC. You don't know how the weather will change. And since you're out all day, you want to prepare for all types of weathers. So usually I keep a light jacket in my backpack if I'm going out during the summertime. And in the wintertime, you always want to dress in layers. Bring scarves, hats, gloves. You want to make sure you have a really good jacket. I talked all about this in my tips for living and moving to New York City, but just be sure that you dress appropriately because the weather can be a real deterrent to exploring New York City or just being out and about. Lastly, something that you would probably carry around are headphones. Not only do headphones help if you want to listen to music or if you want to watch a video or something on the subway, but it may also deter people from talking to you. Most people don't really try to talk to you in New York unless they're trying to sell you something or they're homeless, but if you just don't want to be bothered, I would say New Yorkers are good about not bothering you because no one else wants to be bothered, but if you just want to keep your headphones in, people are less likely to ask you questions or talk to you. So lastly, I have two items that are helpful for in the home, which aren't necessarily specific to New York, but really anywhere or any big city. One is a humidifier. I have a whole video about why humidifiers are good and helpful. You can click up here to watch that. But basically humidifiers help because the winter, in the, during the winter time, the heater turns on by itself and you generally don't have the ability to regulate it so it'll just turn on all night and the air gets really dry so it's helpful to have a humidifier to replenish the moisture levels in the air and help you not to dry out your skin during the winter time. And the one I have helps me during the summertime because it has cool air. Another great thing is this electric fly swatter thing. So. There's something about New York where we have a lot of mosquitoes and mosquitoes love feasting on me and they come into our apartment, which is not fun. So I try to kill them as much as possible and obviously mosquitoes are difficult to get or any bugs are difficult to get because they're flying around. This is cool because you can turn it on, there's a light and it basically zaps them in place. So I just like swat it or if I find that they're on the wall, I'll slowly go towards it and just get it and then we'll zap it and it'll kill it right away so you have no fear of it coming back alive. This also helps with other random bugs that you find around that you just want to zap and then it traps them in there so that you can carry it around to the trash can and then dump it out. So those are my New York essentials for living and traveling here in New York City. I hope you guys found it helpful. Let me know in the comments below if there's other essentials that you guys find helpful for, for being in New York City or really any big city. If you found any of these helpful, let me know that as well. As usual, if you're interested on what to do here in New York City, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, and give this video a thumbs up so that I can make more videos to help you guys here in New York City. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye! Oh, 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 oh,